From 1989 to 1996, the Crypt Keeper was telling ghoulish stories of horror and murder, much to the delight of horror movie fans in the Tales from the Crypt TV show. Airing on HBO, this anthology series would explore individual movie quality self-contained episodes of fun and terror, making it feel like the Twilight Zone with an extra dose of 80s and 90s horror. This much-loved franchise not only made the Crypt Keeper a household name with his decomposed image cemented in pop culture, but it explored many wonderfully scary stories, many of which featured some familiar faces. The show is still just as celebrated today as it was throughout the 90s, making it surpass just being a product of its time, but also a product of the popular horror zeitgeist. Sometimes I crack myself up! <laughs> So today we are going to open up the crypt and explore this popular horror anthology TV series by looking into 10 things that you may not know about Tales from the Crypt. So let's check it out. Number 10, based on a comic book. Yes, believe it or not, but Tales from the Crypt is actually based on a comic book series which ran from 1950 to 1959, and it was an anthology comic book series of ghoulish tales, of which the anthology horror comics was a popular trend in the 1950s among young readers. What I find interesting about the Tales from the Crypt comic book is the Crypt Keeper often looks just like a creepy old man, as opposed to the humorous corpse seen in the TV show. I like to think the Keeper seen in the show is the same person as the old man seen in the comics. It's just that he's deteriorated over the years. And it wasn't just the Crept Keeper who told the stories either in the comics. There was also the Old Witch and the Vault Keeper. EC Comics, who published Tales from the Crypt, also had a string of other comic books that also divulged into the macabre of horror, crime and murder mysteries, which kept young readers entertained with frightful suspense. The comic was created by EC publisher Bill Gaines and editor Al Feldstein, in which Tales from the Crypt was a terror delight of undead zombies, axe murderers, and other monsters like werewolves. However, the glory that was the Tales from the Crypt, along with all of EC's other horror comics, came to a dead end, so to speak, when Frederick Wertham's book, Seduction of the Innocent, was published, in which everyone was then terrified of comic books and thought that they were going to destroy kids' lives and a comic book censorship took place, with the comic book code of authority being put in place. And with this new violence and horror restriction, there was just no more room left for Tales of the Crypt, sadly along with many other horror comics. However, thankfully, since the demise of the original Tales from the Crypt comic book, there have been several revivals with brand new stories. Number 9, Tales from the Crypt was originally intended to be a movie. Producer Joel Silver had envisioned Tales from the Crypt to be an anthology movie, but after the poor performance of other anthology movies at the time, such as The Twilight Zone and Creepshow, he scrapped the idea. However, along comes Lethal Weapon to save the day, as while making the 80s action movie, Silver got talking to director Richard Donner about his idea to bring Tales from the Crypt back to life in live action format, where the idea of making it into a TV show was formed. Donna was keen to get in on the project and backed it up as a producer, and the two filmmakers took the proposed idea to HBO. And it was when Back to the Future director Robert Zemeckis got on board that the show really got off the ground. Zemeckis was a big time director at the time, having just worked on Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and his involvement gave the show the extra push that it needed. Now that's what I call a happy ending. Number 8 Famous Names Attached to the Show Tales from the Crypt had employed the services of many acclaimed Hollywood actors and filmmakers whom had worked on the show, whether they were starring in an episode or directing it. Throughout the show's seven-year run, many famous faces would turn up, including Brad Pitt, Daniel Craig, Benicio Del Toro, Kyle MacLachlan, Terry Hatcher, Bill Paxton, Brad Dourif, Ewan McGregor, Larry Drake, Lance Henriksen, Steve Coogan, Michael J. Fox, Demi Moore, Dan Aykroyd, Tim Curry, and Christopher Reeve. And that's just some of the famous faces who appeared on this show. Heck, the show even brought back some dead famous faces, thanks to the trickery of special effects, including Alfred Hitchcock and Humphrey Bogart. The show also had a lot of interesting lineup of directors, including Tom Hanks and Austria's muscle man himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger even directed an episode of Tales from the Crypt which is really random. 
The episode in question was called Switch and was broadcast in 1990. Other directors the show had employed include Exorcist director William Friedkin, along with Child's Play director Tom Holland and Pet Cemetery director Mary Lambert. What's the matter with you? You want to keep that 90-pound corpse for the rest of your death? The show would also feature some talented music composers, such as Bill Conti, Michael Kamen, and Danny Elfman, who scored the theme. Number 7. Story Behind the Crypt Keeper Puppet Even by today's standards, the Crypt Keeper Puppet was an impressive special effect, proving that puppetry work is often way better than CGI. What do you know? Pa for the corpse! <laughs> It wasn't an entirely easy effect to accomplish though, as it took six puppeteers to bring the Keeper to life, or rather, undead life. Special effects technician Kevin Yeager created the Keeper puppet, and he was best known for making the makeup effects for Freddy Krueger, and the Chucky puppet from the movie Child's Play. Speaking of which, the eyes that were used for the Crypt Keeper were also eye props that were created for Chucky. And I think that once you know this, it kind of shows that the Crypt Keeper does indeed have Chucky's eyes. Which is just awesome. Jaeger would incidentally go on to work on Face Off and Starship Troopers. But I think some of his best work can be seen through the Chucky eyes of the Crypt Keeper. Also, the Keeper was voiced by John Cassar who also provided the voice for the Joker in the DC Super Friends cartoon, as well as providing voices for Looney Tunes and Despicable Me. There goes the neighborhood! <laughs> Number 6. The production moved to the UK. It was when filming commenced for the show's last season that Tales from the Crypt's production travelled across the pond, where the show was then filmed in England, namely London at Erling Studios. That's why, in its later run, the cast went for more well-known American actors like John Lithgow, Joe Pesci and Kirk Douglas, to more well-known British actors like, as mentioned, Daniel Craig, Bob Hoskins and Ewan McGregor. The location switch was made as the Tales from the Crypt production felt that it had completely used up its Californian location and resources, as far as actors and filming locations and local movie-making talents go. Thus, a change was needed. And well, the show did certainly feel more British, that's for sure. It has that sort of dark, grimy feel that a lot of older British TV shows had. And yes, it kept things fresh. I mean, after all, the show was now in its seventh year. However, the show still came to a close with no new series in 1997. Number 5. Tales from the Crypt Albums It seems that not only was Tales from the Crypt popular with TV viewers, but also on the pop charts, as the show released a series of music albums. Now this isn't the first time this has happened. Anyone remember that time Freddy Krueger went rogue and released a rock album? Yeah. First, there was the soundtrack album, which was released in 1991 and featured a compilation of songs and composed music that had been used throughout the series. One of the songs in the album was called Crypt Jam and even had its own music video where the Crypt Keeper proved not only is he good at hosting horror stories and one-liners, but he is also quite the pop star too, delivering in all that awesome 90s schlock cheese. Then jumped to 1994 and a special Christmas themed album was put together called Have Yourself a Scary Little Christmas, which consisted of Christmas jingles performed by the Crypt Keeper himself, only to have the words of the songs reworked to give them more of a horror movie theme. So instead of We Wish You a Merry Christmas, the Crypt Keeper sings We Wish You Bury the Misses. Yeah, please do. She's starting to stink. And listening to the Crypt Keeper singing is interesting. It's more of a novelty thing, just something you'll listen to for the fun of it. It's not really something you'll continuously listen to to get your jam on. And finally, a heavy metal theme Tales from the Crypt album was released in the year 2000 called Tales from the Crypt Monsters of Metal, which essentially was just heavy metal bands performing horror related songs, which featured acts such as Judas Priest and Black Sabbath. Number 4. A failed pilot was used in Tales from the Crypt. In 1991, the Fox Network aired a pilot for a TV show called Two Fisted Tales, which, like Tales from the Crypt, was to be an anthology series and was based on stories from fellow EC comic series Action Comics. However, after the pilot was shown, Fox dropped the show and no more episodes for Two Fisted Tales were made. But not to let the footage go to waste, 
The three segments filmed for the story were then re-edited into episodes of Tales from the Crypt, mainly just having the Crypt Keeper inserted into them. Those stories being Yellow, Showdown and King of the Road. So at least the effort put into these stories didn't go to waste. Speaking of TV shows going nowhere, in 1997, a Tales from the Crypt spin-off series, which had the rather interesting title of Perversions of Science, was aired, with stories also based on the exploits of EC Comics, specifically Weird Science. But that only lasted one season. Wow, all these strange TV shows. Well, at least they didn't make a cartoon based on Tales from the Crypt, because that would have been really weird, right? Right? Uh, right? What? Why are you guys looking at me like that for? Number three, cartoon series. So yes, lasting for two seasons in 1993 and 1994, there was an animated children's show based on Tales from the Crypt. Well, I guess if Rambo and Robocop can get their own children's animated TV series, then anything goes. So in the cartoon, the Crypt Keeper, who is now incredibly green, would tell more child-friendly horror stories to the viewer. There was no murders or gore, but instead the intensity from the adult live-action series was replaced with moral lessons for the children to learn. Because who else better to teach your kids than the Crypt Keeper? It was initially intended for the Crypt Keeper puppet from the series to host the show, but it was decided that his appearance would be too scary for Saturday morning viewings, and thus might put off the kids munching away on their Cocoa Pops. After ABC cancelled the show, it did eventually come back for a third season in 1999 on CBS in a show called New Tales from the Crypt Keeper. The animation looked slightly better this time with the Crypt Keeper more resembling his ghoulish look from the live action TV show, but it wasn't enough to save the show and its revival only lasted one season. But that story just makes me go all to pieces. <laughs> Number two, there was a British movie version. Yep, long before the TV series that started in 1989, there was already a British movie somewhat based on the tales from the crypt. Released in 1972 and starring Peter Cushion and Joan Collins, the Tales from the Crypt movie is a forgotten anthology movie, which has a much darker hammer horror feel to it, which is not surprising as its director, Freddie Francis, was a hammer horror director. The anthology movie is made up of five stories, which aren't just from the Tales from the Crypt comic book, but also other EC comics, such as The Haunt of Fear and The Vault of Horror, with one segment even being about the old Monkey Paw horror story, which has been around since 1901, making it an odd mix of stories. The Crypt Keeper is played by Ralph Richardson, who also played the Supreme Being in Time Bandits and he just doesn't have the creep factor or intrigue of the Crept Keeper from the TV series or comics. He just looks like some guy wearing a hood. He doesn't even look run down or deteriorated. However, this is an interesting and different take into what would become a much loved and much celebrated character. The movie even features the story of a serial killer Santa which is called, and all through the house, which would get remade into a Tales from the Crypt episode for the TV series. If anything, this movie is like a prototype of what Tales from the Crypt might have been under someone else's vision. Although the movie is largely forgotten, especially when compared to the popular TV series, it's still worth checking out for, if anything, just sheer curiosity. Number 1. Failed Movie Series When the Tales from the Crypt TV series wrapped up, there was plans to release a series of Tales from the Crypt themed movies. So instead of the Crypt Keeper hosting individual TV stories, he would indeed be hosting actual movies, which is a very interesting idea if it was done right. The first Tales from the Crypt movie to start this new trend was Demon Knight, which was released in 1993 followed by Bordello of Blood in 1996, but sadly that movie tanked at the box office. However, two other well-loved and celebrated movies that were intended to be Tales from the Crypt movies but eventually ended up being their own thing was Peter Jackson's The Frighteners and Roger Rodriguez's From Dusk Till Dawn, both of which were released in 1996. The Frighteners was produced by Robert Zemeckis, who was also a producer on the Tales from the Crypt TV show and worked on its two theatrical movies. Just imagine had the Crypt Keeper introduced and concluded those movies. 
I wonder if it had the Tales from the Crypt brand added to them, if it would have made any kind of impact to the two movies' successes. Makes you wonder, had the Frighteners and From Dusk Till Dawn been released under the Tales from the Crypt banner, then maybe the Tales from the Crypt film series might have actually really taken off and become a huge phenomenon. But that said, I am also kind of glad that both movies are their own individual films and not just part of a bigger franchise. But I digress. Finally, it all came to an end in 2002 with the straight-to-video movie called Ritual. Well, that was my look into Tales from the Crypt and I hope you enjoyed it. When I was a kid, I always found this to be a really fun TV show and kind of naughty. Like, you know you shouldn't watch it because your parents and teachers wouldn't approve, but to hell with it because you were going to watch it anyway and that made it all the more appealing. Anyway, I'm Minty. And remember, kiddies, horror can be as fun as it can be scary. See ya!